We got an incident coming out of Vancouver, Washington, where a young man shot at multiple churches in a high school going on a shooting spree while wearing body armor and fleeing from police. Now, before we get into this, if you want to get current updates on crimes occurring at churches, if you want to know more about church security team training, specifics about tactics and things that you can do to make your church safer, you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, head on over to ChristianWarriorTraining.com. I'll have a whole bunch of information over there for you all for free. I don't charge. It's my gift to you as a fellow follower of Christ. Even if you aren't a believer, you're in the right place. I've got tons of resources over there for your concealed carrier. Talk to you about how to identify armed subjects, how to identify insider threats, how to set up a safety team, concealed carry tactics, you name it. It's all over there for free, ChristianWarriorTraining.com. Let's go ahead and break down this incident. Now, the string of drive-by shootings happened in Vancouver, Washington, at multiple churches and ended in a police chase down Interstate 5. This was early on Tuesday morning. Now, no one was hurt, but they arrested 23-year-old Alexi Saturin of Vancouver on allegations of shooting a weapon from a moving car, first and second degree malicious mischief, and attempting to elude police. And again, deputies said Saturin was wearing body armor at the time of his arrest, had a Sig Sauer handgun, and multiple magazines. Now, this whole incident happened when someone called 911 to report gunfire in the area of the Walnut Grove section of Vancouver and then called back to say it was coming from the Adventist Community Church on Northeast Street in Johns Road. Deputies found bullet holes in the front of the church and 9mm bullet casings in the parking lot. About 20 minutes later, more people called 911 to report gunfire near Cassid Columbia Church on Northwest 99th Street in Vancouver. Deputies then found windows broken by gunfire, 17 bullet casings on church grounds, and three bullet holes in an unoccupied Kia SUV in the church parking lot. Back at the Seventh-day Adventist Church, deputies heard gunfire and spotted a blue SUV without headlights. When a deputy tried to follow it on in a patrol car, the SUV driver sped away recklessly and fled police. But they traced the Toyota Highlander to an address in Philida and called the owner, who said he wasn't home, but his wife and adult son were. There, deputies found the woman, an empty SIG pistol case, but not the son, who is now identified by deputies as Saturin. Around 3.30, deputies heard a single shot near Columbia River High School and found a car with a bullet hole through its windshield. Now back at the Felita home, deputies spotted the Toyota Highlander again as he was probably coming home, again with no headlights, and roll into Saturin's neighborhood. The driver noticed the deputies and immediately fled, and law enforcement gave chase. Now on I-5, deputies threw down spike strips that eventually stopped the Highlander, and he was taken into custody. Okay, so we have multiple churches shot, a high school shot, got a guy wearing body armor. There's some there's some things that we can learn from this. After every incident breakdown, I will always talk to you about what you can do to protect your church. Now, there's not much you can do when somebody does a drive-by shooting at your church. Let's break it down to its simplest forms. The minute you start receiving fire from the outside, pull people away from those exterior walls, windows, and doors, and bring them into an interior portion. Like usually it's the sanctuary is within the building. Think think of like if there was a tornado outside, where would you pull all those people and you would pull them into the most strongest part of the building that's away from those exterior walls and windows and doors. At the same time, your church safety team should be using f uh, cover and then maneuvering forward to engage the threat that's outside. Now on something like this, a rifle would definitely be more practical and I don't think there are very many teams that have rifles available to them. I do have plans to have an upcoming video to talk about if you employ a rifle at your church and I know a lot of people will be shocked about that but times are changing. If you were gonna have a rifle at your church, how you would do that as far as storage, training, employment uh, and how that would go. But if you can get in a position to fire a maneuver, uh, I would look at doing this as a reality-based training scenario at your church and how you would react to that, how you would pull everybody in, because that'd be the most important part is getting people away from danger and getting them to safety. And then how you would engage a threat f that is in a moving vehicle, firing a gun at your church and how you're gonna fire a maneuver to stop that person. And the only way you're gonna work that out is by doing some reality-based training scenarios. 
and then obviously calling police right away. I know a lot of people scoff at the idea of having a rifle at a church, but times are different now. We have a lot of threats and we have to protect our people. And just sitting there and being a bullet sponge and sucking up bullets isn't really an option. And But then again, I don't think our churches need to be bunkers to where we have somebody standing outside with an AR-15. That's unacceptable too. I would not be doing that. Even when you look at the White House, they have snipers on the roof. Even those guys don't have weapons visible to the public on the outside. They might be seen looking around for threats, but they certainly aren't ready to engage, but they have stuff nearby in case they need it. If you start putting people with AR-15s out in front of your churches, not many people are going to feel welcome to come to your church. So we have to keep them open and we just need to be vigilant and we need to be paying attention and have plans for when something like this does happen. Next up, this young man had body armor. If you decide to get out of the vehicle and start engaging people at the church, you need to ask yourself if you're training for, it's called a failure drill, where you have somebody that is not going down, you're shooting them center mass and nothing is happening. So what we do, a lot of people call uh, the Mozambique drill or El Presidente, or I've heard a bunch of different names, but basically you're going to fire two rounds. Uh, they go center mass, nothing happens. Now you're going to transition and fire at his head. When we do that drill, that is part of our qualification standard. But I think people don't realize why they're doing that, right? Or my church does, but I think other churches, I think people might not understand why they're they're doing that drill, the two to the chest, one to the head. So it's su super important to practice those incidents on the range, but it's also important to do it in reality-based training. You should always have in your active shooter scenario, something where you have somebody wearing body armor and then you have to defeat that somehow. Okay, remember as you leave here, do not turn your church into a bunker. Leave it wide open, let people come to Christ. Just be prepared for whatever danger comes to the church and take care of it so you can protect the people worshiping. The most important thing you can remember out of this entire video is to remember your ABCs. Always be caring.